We're going to be talking about the payments industry. It is, as we're all aware, undergoing a period of rapid transformation with financial institutions and their clients needing to maximise speed, choice, reach transparency and digitisation. Now, in order to help tackle all of these challenges, multiple challenges, it is being argued that business structures have to be reworked to achieve that laser-like focus on areas of growth. Now, City is concentrating on four growth missions for its payments business. And to explore these, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Debo Sen, who's Global Co-Head of Payments and Receivables at City TTS. And also the person she shares this role with is Amit Agarwal, who's also Global Co-Head of Payments and Receivables at City TTS. It's clearly a very big role if you guys have to share it. <laughs> but look, it's good to see you here. Are you enjoying Cybos? Absolutely. It's delightful to be back here with so many people, seeing everyone live. It's wonderful. And so many rich conversations. And there are more rich conversations to come. But look, Amit, let me start first with you, because look, I want to focus on your latest press release on 24-7 US dollar clearing, um, on US dollar clearing. So why was it so important for you? to create this offering because obviously it is a big thing here. It's definitely a, a, a big thing and uh, I think it's really a combination of what our clients are telling us and where we feel City is uniquely positioned to help our clients with their, with their specific needs. And Juliet, you would uh, probably hear this throughout the conference that our clients' business models are continuing to get disrupted. It's not just financial institutions who are going through a period of disruption, but every customer that we are providing transaction services today is going through a generational period of disruption. So if, for example, uh, a consumer wants to buy a TV on a Saturday in the middle of the night, uh, is it not normal for us to expect that the financial institution should be able to move money along with the purchase of the good? The, the reality is at the moment, the financial system is dependent on financial systems working uh, during the business hours. Mm. And that we feel is a need that needs to be filled. And we feel that city with a global network, we are uniquely positioned to fill that need. So the 24 by seven clearing is one of our uh, solution that helps fill that need. We have, uh, and we are fortunate to have a global network of over 1500 financial institutions around the world. And essentially what we're doing is we are making our entire payment network operate 24 by seven. So the notion of uh, money not moving on Saturday or Sunday, or the idea that money will not move if it is a 4th of July holiday in the US, we are getting rid of that friction altogether. Mm. Uh, through this service, we are enabling movement of US dollar for our clients 24 by seven 365 days a year without any holidays, without any cutoff. And that is really part of our strategy to move towards a completely 24 by seven payment infrastructure. So effectively, what you're doing is creating a structure that is reflective of reality, the reality of your clients. Exactly where our clients are going. And I think one of the things I would, I would probably emphasize is that a lot of the work that has gone behind building this solution is work that we have done on our side. And why that is important is that there is a tendency to create novel solutions that ride on technology, which our clients are not pro probably ready for, right? So all of the work sits on our side and from our client's perspective, uh, nothing really changes in their experience. And that's very important because we want to make sure that whatever solutions we build have the right customer experience, that it is easy for our clients to consume our solutions. So from that perspective, I think as we have launched this solution, we have heard great response from our financial institution clients at Cybos, and we can't be excited enough to just launch this mm. in the fourth quarter. And Debo, come into the conversation because just listening to this, what it also tells me is, or well, it gives me an insight into the close relationship that you have with your clients to actually understand what they want and also to be preemptive casting into the future following trends but at the same time what do you regard as the number one opportunity and the number one issue that city's payments and receivables business is facing today because we know what you're trying to do but there is never such a thing called a clear run it's never entirely guaranteed 
You're absolutely right, Juliet. I think our biggest opportunity uh, really remains what it has always been, which is helping and supporting our clients as they perform or go into their new journeys. Uh, many years ago, City followed its multinational clients as they ventured all over the world. That's how we built our global physical footprint. But today, we are following our clients into the digital world. As Amit just said, every client of ours, no matter what sector they belong to, there could be a mobility client, there could be an advertising client, could be an energy company, and of course, could be a financial institution. They are all going through significant business model shifts as commerce is going online. And we find that in these examples, or even as we help our digital native clients go global at much greater speed than clients have ever done so before, we often find that having a seamlessly embedded payment solution can often be the enabler that helps our clients be successful or relevant in the new digital space. So we are really laser focused on solving those business problems. The payment uh, space can be quite noisy. It is easy to get distracted. There are so many players at the moment. Exactly. <laughs> it's very easy for even players like us to get distracted, but we keep our laser focus on our client's journey and solving their most pressing business problems using our network, both physical and digital, as well as our uh, access to technology. Mm. And, and Amit, I like this analogy of the laser focus, but at the same time, there is that sort of hot button issue there about the strategy, con well, the context for that strategy, that yes, you're responding to what the clients want, but at the same time, how much of it is being driven by existential factors, fintechs, and also those new entrants? Because we shouldn't forget, as we've rightly established, that it is a very noisy market. There are so many players. And yes, you can listen to your clients, but at the same time, what about these other factors? Are they also driving some of that change? I think there is a tendency uh, often to think of fintechs or any new digital entrants into the payment space as, a, as an existential threat to the traditional players. And, and I appreciate that view, and I think that is one way of looking at it. Uh, we share a different perspective on, on, on this uh, issue, if at all this is an issue. We don't think it is an issue. Uh, we look at it through the lens of the explosive growth that we see in digital payments and in the growth of digital economy. And if you think that the world is becoming digital, I think we're just getting started. We're at the beginning uh, of the journey. We're just probably the beginning of the journey. And I would venture and say that probably five to seven years from now, the digital economies will be significantly bigger. The pie continues to grow. And there is more than enough room for innovation to happen. And we actually need more innovation in the payment space. We need, we welcome the idea of new entrants coming, both challenging the traditional players, but also co-creating with the mm. traditional players, City being one of them. And, and the reality is uh, we are on an aggressive investment journey on, in our payments business. And more often than not, the solutions that we are building, we are building them with some of the best fintechs that are out there. Because like they both said, the, la the laser focus is on customer journey and customer experience. There are assets that we bring to the table and there are assets that others can bring to the table which are better than us. And bringing those together is really at the core of being client-centric. And equally, uh, the fintechs have a symbiotic relationship with us. We are also providing our transaction banking services and our payment rail to some of the best in breed fintechs around the world. So it works both ways. So really, I don't see this as a debate between fintechs becoming existential threat to traditional players. Yeah, I mean, I, I have come around to the opinion myself that in many ways it's actually moved on because there are former investment bankers who are running fintechs, so they're actually bringing that experience into what they do, but they still need to work with the investment banks because they have the power of the brand as well. But given that you believe that we are at the beginning of the digital journey, can you see that impacting where City will invest in 2023 and beyond. I mean, what's your take on that, Debo? Absolutely. I think, uh, Juliet, what we are really doing, and Amit touched on it a little bit, is that we are focusing our investment efforts into what we are calling four key client growth missions. 
uh, to really align ourselves with our clients' journeys and their needs. So the first one is globalized commerce. As our clients do more and more digitally all over the world, they need access to a best-in-class payment network that increasingly connects not only to clearing systems around the world like we do to about 250 clearing systems, but also increasingly is using new forms of value transfer like connecting into wallets, into mobile cards, into, into real-time payment systems. The second growth mission is really around helping our clients sell online, which is a big priority for us. At Siri, we are building the next phase of payment acceptance solutions for our clients. The third growth mission is called Enrich Platforms. As our fintech, as Amit said, as well as our platform clients look to embed financial services and make it available to their ecosystem, we are building the APIs to help them to do so. And most importantly for our financial institution clients here at Cybos, bringing it all together in our fourth but very important mission called Enable Banks, we are bringing all these solutions together to enable our bank and FI clients bring them to their, to their customers in turn. So, and this is reflected in the more than a billion dollars per annum that our TTS business, which we are part of, is investing into technology every year to, to make this happen. Okay, so some exciting times ahead, but sadly, time is the enemy. It's gone against us, but look, thank you so much for joining us and taking us through those four stages. And we'll see you next year, and well, at Cybos in Toronto, I believe. So not far for you guys to travel. Great. <laughs> thank you, Julia. Thank you, Julia.